Okay, this is a bit of an overview of electrolysis. Um, it's a comparison between it and galvanic cells. Um, the process is opposite. So the definition of electrolysis is when you pass electrical energy, uh, electrons, through a conducting electrolyte um, and that those electrons that are being added or removed will cause redox chemical reactions to occur. Um, you need to be able to look at a setup and work out whether it's um, undergoing a galvanic process which is spontaneous or it's undergoing an electrolytic process um, where e electrical energy is supplied. So if you look at these two, um, the light bulb in this one is kind of glaringly obvious. So this particular setup is producing electrical energy from chemical energy. Whereas the other setup, you've got a battery or some sort of power supply, so you're using electrical energy to produce chemicals. So the battery is a real giveaway that this is an electrolytic process um, and some sort of you know light globe or some, some um, thing that is being charged by the electrical energy would suggest that it's galvanic. Another way of working out if it's electrolytic or galvanic is to look at the anode. Um, and and therefore the cathode as well, but the anode in galvanic is negative, um, whereas in electrolytic it's positive. So the electrons are being forced from here to here. Um, so normally the electrons would spontaneously come in this direction from the negative. If this was a battery, if this setup was a battery, they would come from the anode, the negative. But if we're um, supplying the electrons, you can't get rid of the negative, so the electrons are coming from here and going to there, and so this is undergoing reduction, so it's the cathode. Um, this setup is in your textbook. So another way that people um, notice whether it's galvanic or electrolytic, galvanic cells, you have to keep um, the two half cells separate because the reactants in them would react spontaneously if you put them together. So whatever is losing the electrons and whatever is gaining the electrons, if you put this with this um, directly then the electrons would be lost from here directly into the solution. So the reactants have to be kept separate. So you need, you'd need two separate containers for galvanic. Um, for electrolytic you don't have to worry about having the reactants separate um, because they, they're they not going to react spontaneously. You have to force a reaction to happen. Um, so they can be in the same container. But sometimes it's not very clear whether it's you know the same container or not. So it's best not to use this, you know, don't be looking for an individual container for electrolytic um, because often we have to put some polymer membrane or something to separate the two um, containers so that the products won't react. So the products must be kept separate because they would spontaneously react with each other. Um, so this at the moment is galvanic. It's got a voltmeter. So if you change that and you put a power supply here then you could be forcing this to occur in the opposite direction. So don't get kind of um, used to seeing something and just assuming that a power supply is a, it's a clear indication or that the anode is um, positive rather than negative. It's a clear indication that it's an electrolytic rather than galvanic. They'll try and mix it up for you on exam questions. Um, so this looks galvanic but then you can see that you're charging and discharging. So it's like a battery, it kind of looks like a fuel cell, it's kind of all a bit mixed up. Um, so in this case um, they, they gave half equations and um, the order of the half equations indicated that this particular chemical is going to lose the electrons and it will go over here and as it's going over here, when it's discharging, it goes around, powers whatever it is that you need to power, and then comes the electrons come over to here. So they're going on a long journey before they get over here. So when it's being um, charged or recharged, the electrons would be forced back in this direction, 
being removed from here. They've just added these as like storage tanks to supply this just to confuse you even more. Um, so this can, it's like um, a battery basically, a very, uh, so it can undergo galvanic and electrolytic. Okay, so this is an overview of um, the differences between them. So the classic sort of differences, galvanic produces electricity, um, turning chemical energy into electrical energy, whereas electrolytic consumes electricity, so you have a power supply. So the power supply is kind of the clear indication that it's electrolytic. Um, so you use, turn electrical energy into chemicals, so you're making chemicals. Spontaneous, so you have to keep the reactants apart. Non-spontaneous, but your products, because they're opposite to each other, the reactions, um, the products would undergo a spontaneous reaction. Um, so you have to keep the products separate. Um, this is a classic, anode is negative. Um, so because you're forcing the reaction to go in the opposite direction because batteries have to be recharged and you can't rub the negative end off the anode on the battery then when you're forcing the electrons back into the anode um, then that would be undergoing um, reduction it would be the cathode and so it would now be negative um, you need to know discharge and recharge so the red what's in red is the differences don't get confused with this. This is never different. The oxidation always occurs at the anode and reduction always occurs at the cathode for both of them. It's always the same. They'll try and confuse you and mix you up, um, but don't. It's um, an anode. Oxidation is the loss. That's where the electrons are coming from. Cathode reduction is the gain. That's where the electrons are going to, and that's always true. Um, the cations in the electrolyte, the positive ions, will move towards the cathode where reduction is happening, where extra electrons are being added. You need to balance that negative charge by adding positive cations. And the anions will move towards the anode because you're losing negative um, charge electrons from here, negative. So you need to balance the charge by um, moving negative ions across. Okay processes.